So when working on a problem like this, all right, this is how I expect all of your homework to be done. All right, this is how I expect all of the graphs to look. Exactly the same. And guess what? On your tests and all your quizzes, everything is going to look in this mode. All right, Kyle? So when we have a problem like this, there's five things that we're going to be looking for. The amplitude, the period, the x scale, the phase shift, and the vertical transformation. All right? That's all the information you need. And if you can find all that information, one, you're going to get half the problem right on the test. And the other thing is you have a great source of information to be able to graph what exactly cosine looks like. All right? So um, remember, the first thing is y equals a times cosine of bx minus c plus d. Now, in this case, you guys can see, well, we don't have a d, right? But we have this number in front. So let me go and ask you then this equation. Is it OK then if I wrote the d in front? Is that OK? There's nothing wrong with that, right? It's like this. We, all, we like to write it like this, but can we still write it like that? Is it still OK? Yeah. So the 4 is going to be our d, and that's going to be our, um, our vertical translation. But anyway, let's, let's go back and let's do the rest of what we have. So our amplitude, absolute value of a. All right? We can see here our a is what's being multiplied by our cosine function, which is a negative 1. So the absolute value of negative 1 is just equal to 1. That's going to tell us the half distance between our maximum and our minimum. So that means our graph is only going to go as high as 1, bless you, and is only as low as 1. The next is the period, 2 pi divided by b, where b is going to be um, your coefficient of your x, which in this case is pi. So that's 2 pi divided by pi, which equals 2. Okay. Then we do our x scale. Our x scale, remember, is our period divided by 4. So just take your period divided by 4. So that is 2 divided by 4, which equals 1 half. All right. Our phase shift is we always take what's inside of our function and set it equal to 0. That's going to tell us where our graph is going to shift horizontally. It also is a good place for us to start our graph. You don't have to start your graph there, but it is a very easy way to not get confused if you start at the phase shift. All right? Because the graph, remember guys, it, it's indefinite. It goes indefinite to the left and indefinite to the right. So there really is a start and an end. However, starting at the phase shift will um, help you out. So in this case, we have pi x equals 0. So x equals 0. So therefore, we're gonna, we can start at 0. We don't have to, but it's very helpful. And really, there is no phase shift, right? You can just say there's none. Our vertical transformation is d, which in this case is negative 4. So therefore, we're going to shift down 4. All right? For each one of your graphs, you guys should be able to complete um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all five pieces of that information. Okay. It is going to be requested from you to repeat all five pieces of that information. Now, once we have this, how can we go ahead and graph? Well, first of all, let me graph you what the one period of the cosine graph looks like for those of you that forgot. All right? Cosine graph starts at 1, or it doesn't have to start, but remember, one period of it looks like this. So we have pi, pi halves. So we have pi halves pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, this is just one period of pi. Remember, the maximum is at 0. Then it goes to an intercept. Then it goes to a minimum. Then it goes to an intercept. And then it goes back to a maximum. That is what the parent graph of cosine looks like, just one period of it. Now remember, it continues, though. On and on and on and on. And then it goes to the negative, on and on and on and on. All right? So what you guys can do is there's two different kind of choices. I always like to start at my phase shift. So since my phase shift is at 0, that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to say that's 0. So I'll make a nice little line, say that's 0. I'm going to go up to 1. Eh, let's make that a little different. Go up to 1 and down to 1. Now, obviously, we know there's a phase shift. All right. So to help you guys out, what I would recommend is graph it first and then do your transformations, like the shifting up and down and the reflections 
last, all right? But first graph it, graph it with the period and the x scale. Now, you can do your x scale 2 to the right, or 1 positive, 1 negative, but you have to provide two periods. So I don't care which way you do it. I'll actually do it. Um, actually, I'm going to do 1 positive and 1 negative in this case. So to graph this, we know our x scale is 1 half. That means between each one of my um, points, crap. Remember, guys, it looked like this, right? That's 1, 2, minimum, 1, 2, 3, 4. The, the distance, but here, is my x scale. This distance is the x scale. The distance between each important point is your x scale. So your x scale is 1 half. So that means when you're trying to determine your tick marks, and on your test, I gave you tick marks, right? I gave you what the tick marks are, and they're evenly spaced. So you don't have to write in your own tick marks. All you simply have to do is say, well, how, what is the distance between each tick mark? Well, that's 1 half. That's 1, right? That's 3 halves, and that's 2. And I said positive and negative 3? Yeah. So then let's go in the negative direction. 1 half, negative 1, negative 3 halves, negative 2. OK? That's the x scale. That is the distance between each of my important points. All right? Now, what I'm going to do again is just graph it first, and then I'll apply the reflection and the transformation. So it's very helpful when you guys are graphing these to use a pencil, all right? And just use some little dashed and dotted lines when you're doing this, Kelsey. So remember, cosine starts at 1, right? It starts like this with this paragraph with no transformations. So if I was going to graph it through this x scale, I would just do a nice little dotted line of what the graph is supposed to look like. That's what the graph would look like without a reflection and without a transformation, all right? Um, So now um, we need to apply the reflection. Well, guys, if I was going to apply the reflection, that means everything gets inverted over the x-axis. So now my graph is going to look something like this. Right? That's the reflection. Because it's being multiplied by a negative. Remember when your a is negative? Remember like a quadratic. When a is negative, you flip it over, right? That's the exact same thing. Your a is negative, so you reflect over the x-axis. Does everybody see that, what I've done so far? And the other thing is, let's go and double check. What was our period again? 2. Is that how long it takes for our cycle to go? Yes. So then I can continue this in this direction. There's going to be a point. 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 OK? Because remember, you have to include two periods. Now, the last thing is this. Transfer, um, is this translation, shifting four units down. So now I'm going to take a look at what is each one of these points. That's a point and that's a point, right? Well, here, that's at 0, 1. So ladies and gentlemen, if I transform this four down, instead of at this point being at 0, 1, it's now going to be at 0, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now that's going to be my new point, which I wish I had a better, I'll use green. So then this point is now going to be at 0, negative 4. This point is going to be at 0, 3. This will be down back at 4. And this is down back at 5. No, wait. Uh, oh. Um, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's down at 5. Right. I'm graphing the red. I'm graphing the red, right? You're transforming the red. So now. A lot of times, it's also helpful if you want to re, if you want to transform the x-axis. A lot of students like to do that, so then they can kind of see where's this new x-axis because they get confused. But your final graph should look like this, and you guys can see all it is is that's a direct reflection of our red graph over here. Yes, question? Oh, okay. And then I'll just do the exact same over here. So that would be a point. That'd be my next point up, point, next point. OK? So that's what it's going to look like. And that's it. That's all you guys have to do. It's not that.